Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2020 American science fiction and action movie called Bloodshot. The movie begins with Marine Ray Garrison and his team, who are undertaking an operation in Kenya. They break into a house where the main target is hiding, eliminating all of his men easily until Ray reaches a room. The main target has his rifle aimed at a hostage and forces Ray to lower his weapon. He attempts to negotiate with the terrorist and manages to trick the target into moving his rifle. Using this opportunity, Ray grabs his pistol and shoots the target to death. Mission accomplished and the Marines return to Italy where Ray's wife, Gina, has been waiting for her lover. The couple immediately head over to Amalfi Coast and spend a comfortable evening together. Ray tells Gina despite all the scars he received and all the operations he went on, he always comes home. The next day, Ray is left alone in the hotel room when some home invaders suddenly break in and attack him. He tries to fight them and manages to eliminate all the invaders, killing them on the spot. However, when he tries to run away, he meets Martin Axe, who incapacitates him with a tranquilizer. Ray later wakes up tied to a chair while Martin is interrogating him, forcing him to leak the source who tipped him off about the hostages in Kenya earlier. Ray insists that he doesn't know, but Martin brings out a captive Gina, threatens him that his man will kill her if he doesn't comply. He keeps telling the bad guy that he doesn't know, so Martin decides to shoot Gina in the head with a six inches nail gun. Ray is furious and swears with Liam Neeson's golden phrase, that he will find and kill him. He tells Martin that he should kill him while he can. Martin takes the advice and shoots him in the face. Ray is magically revived and awakens in a testing facility of RST. He meets Dr. Emil Harding, the man behind the project Bloodshot that gives Ray a second chance in the world, and his assistant, KT. Ray can't remember anything, even his name. Dr. Harding explains that Ray was killed and his body was donated by the US military because nobody claimed his body. He tells him that RST is part of the US military that develops stuff to make soldiers faster and stronger. Ray's body has been filled with microbots called nanites that act as blood substitutes and allow his body to regenerate from every wound applied to his body. Turns out that Harding lost one of his arms when he was young and he replaced it with a steel arm with stronger power. He then introduces Ray to other soldiers with RST implants. KT, who now breathes through a respirator. There are Tibbs, who has a camera implanted that allows him to see everything through it, and Jimmy Dalton, ex-Navy SEAL with prosthetic legs implanted in his body. After that, Ray returns to his room and gets some rest. Later that night, he begins to remember his past, causing him to wake up from his sleep. He decides to test out his new body and discovers that he has superhuman strength as well, allowing him to crack a concrete column in several punches. He then sees KT who demonstrates his ability to hold his breath as long as she wants in the water. Ray interacts with her and she encourages him to focus on the future and forget the past. As they share a drink together, Ray suddenly remembers all the events just before he was killed by Martin. KT tries to calm him down, but he ignores her and immediately heads out to find the killer. Ray's nanites manages to scan through search platforms and hack into the Interpol network which allow Ray to discover Martin's location. Harding warns him and orders him to come back, but he can't be stopped as he's already hot on Martin's trail. Using the knowledge he gets from the internet, he flies a private jet to Budapest where Martin and his men are doing their operation. When the cars reach the tunnel, Ray deliberately crashes a truck towards them, blocking their way out. He eliminates all the bodyguards one by one. Their bullets cause no effect towards him as his body manages to rapidly regenerate some severe gunshot wounds. Martin recognizes Ray and attempts to run away from the car while Ray keeps knocking out all of his men easily. He eventually corners Martin and he starts begging for his life. Martin tells him that Harding is manipulating him, but Ray doesn't care and immediately shoots Martin to death. In the morning, Ray drives to a place where KT, Dalton, and Tibbs have been waiting for him. He is brought back to RSD and gets himself charged. Suddenly, Dalton comes in to tell him that Gina is not really dead and reveals that Ray is actually a toy soldier that is being used repeatedly by Harding to kill specific people he doesn't like. Dalton then commences the memory wiping procedure which makes Ray forget everything he has gone through. On the other side, it is revealed that Harding organizes everything from the hostage situation to Ray's capture to be replayed again and again in his mind. What's different in each sequence is the shooter's face. This time Harding's IT expert, Eric, alters the man's face into Nick Barish's face, who used to be Harding's colleague. KT suddenly shows up and claims that she has had enough with the operation as she knows Ray is being used against his free will. Harding promises her that this will be the last one and orders her to prepare the real-world scenario for Ray. She has no choice and unreluctantly obeys him. 
Ray wakes up and goes through the exact scene as before, but this time he sees Barish as the man who killed his wife. As usual, Harding and his team monitor him from the office and pretend to be concerned. He manages to trace and locate Barish's hideout and immediately flies to London. Eric also manages to hack into the house's CCTV cameras, allowing them to track Barish men's movements. Ray allows himself to be captured by the bodyguards to get himself inside the hideout. Barish IT expert, Wilfred Wiggins, has prepared an EMP to use against him if necessary, which Harding and his men spot through the surveillance cameras. However, the device needs time to be charged until 100% while Ray starts knocking out everyone and is getting closer to Boris' room. Harding realizes this and orders his toy soldier to abort the mission, but Ray mutes him and keeps moving forward. Ray eventually reaches the room and immediately kills Barish before the EMP is fully charged. In the other room, Wiggins hits the EMP button, instantly knocking out all electric power within a 20-mile radius as well as temporarily shutting Ray down. He then wakes Ray up with a powerful electrical charge. He tells Ray that he was forced to work for Burish, but he actually wants to help him. The Marine then informs Wiggins about experiencing the same memory over and over again, but with a different face for each killer. This makes Wiggins figure out that Harding has been using him to wipe out every defector of RST. Ray realizes that Gina is alive, but Wiggins worries that if he goes looking for her, Harding will capture him, reset his memories, and put Wiggins' face on the shooter's body next time. Ray insists on going there and he gives the IT expert a sample of his Nanit's blood, ordering him to figure out how it works. After that, Ray takes Barish vintage car and heads over to Gina's place. He finally meets Gina and thinks that they are still married. However, she reveals that she has moved on and married someone else. When asked the last time they saw each other, she tells him that they have split up on mutual terms since five years ago. The heartbroken Ray drives away, but suddenly gets hit by a truck. Dalton then shows up and shoots him. Ray runs away, but is chased by Tibbs and Dalton. After a long run, the superhuman steals a rifle from the police officer and starts shooting Dalton. Realizing that bullets are useless, he runs away again and Dalton pursues him, but Ray manages to get him to get hit by a truck that shatters his prosthetic legs. Tibbs shows up and manages to stab Ray with a special weapon which immediately shuts him down. On the other side, Harding orders KT to eliminate Wiggins. She disobeys, but she cannot do anything as Harding has full control over her ability to breathe and makes her suffocate. Long story short, KT finds Wiggins and his men somewhere in London where she knocks them out with her fighting skill and then takes Wiggins away. Harding tries to talk to Ray in a virtual world where the superhuman expresses his anger toward Harding. The scientist acts as though he did what was necessary and did what was right for Ray. He then returns Ray back to the RST lab to extract the nanites. KT returns and tells Harding that the IT expert has escaped. Panicked, he cancels the extraction process and immediately orders Eric to rebuild the sequence for Wiggins. Ray is put into the hostage simulation again, but this time KT intervenes and orders Wiggins to hack into RST's server. Harding is furious and tries to shut KT down, but she reveals that she got Wiggins to remove his access to her breathing implant. Harding orders Dawson and Tibbs to chase after Ray, who manages to break free. Wiggins locates the company's server room and orders KT to destroy it, which she does. Dalton confronts Ray and both of them then engage in a fight, causing them to fall off the window. A few moments later, Tibbs comes to help his partner. It's a two versus one situation and somehow Ray still manages to overstrength them. Tibbs eventually falls to his death as Dalton tries to break down the elevator. Ray then grabs Dalton and both of them free falling while he punches him to the ground. Herling shows up in the street and shoots Ray with a grenade launcher. It explodes, but he withstands the explosion and starts to regenerate. Wiggins discovers that the nanites are running low and he won't recover if he takes another hit. Luckily, Ray manages to catch the next grenade and cuts it down to the core. He approaches Hertling and drops the grenade, blowing both of them up. Long story short, Wiggins recovers Ray's body and revives him from death again. He then reprograms the nanites within his body to increase the durability of the microbots. Together with KT, the trio begin their new journey as a team. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.